Alright hey guys and welcome back to another Sonic Collectible Review video. Today I'm going to be doing a review of this book known as Stay Sonic, The Ultimate Guide to the World of Sonic the Hedgehog. And um, it's honestly quite an awesome book. Um, it very much goes into detail of the origin of Sonic the Hedgehog and Dr. Robotnik and um, goes into many other various facts relating to Sonic's world that he lives in. Um, it has various trivia and it also has some tips for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 um, on both the Mega Drive or Genesis and the Master System or Game Gear. Now, um, if you're an American viewer watching this video, then chances are you've probably never even seen this book before. And that is because it was only released in the United Kingdom. And it was released in 1993, back on the heels of the release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, Sonic Bible from around that era that was released by Sega of America, then you're going to be very familiar with the story that is uh, in this book um, relating to um, Sonic's origin and also Dr. Robotnik. Now, it's quite interesting because although the Sonic Bible um, was... Um, made by Sega of America, it was really rarely used to, in American Sonic products, I mean it was um, never in um, featured in any of their cartoons during that era, and it was also not featured in the Archie Sonic uh, comics which is also American. However, the origin relating to this book is uh, very much heavily focused on the uh, Fleetway Sonic the Hedgehog comic that was released um, in obviously United Kingdom and if you're a subscriber to my channel and have been for a while then chances are you know what Sonic the comic is hence the uh, username of the channel now the book for the most part was Mike, uh, wrote by uh, Mike Patterson his name is on the spine here so we've got Mike Patterson Stay Sonic the official Sega handbook so I just want to throw that out there straight away this is um, an official uh, licensed Sega product now although um, the Sonic Bible isn't really technically uh, used in any current Sonic media now um, it's pretty much a forgotten um, form in terms of the Sonic origin and the Sonic universe but um, honestly, I think it's really quite an awesome um, origin story to have for Sonic the Hedgehog and Dr. Robotnik. It gives them a really strong um, backstory. And um, I know there was there was quite a lot of uh, heated um, encounters between Sega of America and Sega of Japan during that era of them taking Sega of Japan's created characters and America, Sega of America basically changing the whole concept, changing how the characters looked and their entire story. And obviously Sega of Japan got quite annoyed by that. And you know, r rightfully so from their point of view because they've spent all this time and whatnot creating these characters and then another organization within their organization has basically taken it and changed it completely because they don't think it suited their audience but um i honestly don't mind the sonic bible story that sega of america did release but um that can be a, like a, a story for another video um some other time so this book was uh, published by fantel and if i show you a little back bit first before we get into some of the details of the book so at the top here, he travels at the speed of sound, he spikes a blue, he sneaks a red, he is Sonic the Hedgehog. But what else do you know? Sonic hasn't always been blue, and Robotnik used to be called Dr. Kinterbor. There was a time when Mobius, Mobius is featured uh, as Sonic's homeworld in this book, as opposed to like Earth, which is sometimes used in um, Sonic canon in video games. Sonic's planet. Sonic's planet was peaceful, but then Robotnik went berserko, and the rest is history. So if you want the scam of Sonic, Robotnik, the Badniks, and the rest, hang around. Plus there are some amazing tips on Sonic 2, Master System, and Mega Drive, so you can take on Robotnik and get those Chaos Emeralds. It's here now, everything you wanted to know about Sonic, but you didn't know who to ask. And this retailed for originally for £4.99. Now converting that into US dollars around that era probably would have been around eight or nine, about eight dollars I'd say. Now I never actually got this um, from like an official bookshop during this era, but I very much vividly remember when I got this book. Um, I was with um, a relative at that time and we was uh, going through it's like a local boot sale or um I think what more commonly the word you use in America is it thrift sales or thrifts and um, I very much remember seeing this for sale and I think it may have been about 50 pence and I asked the relative I was with at the time because I was obviously quite young I was like oh my god can I have this book this probably would have been around 94 around that sort of era I reckon around 1994 so it would have been not too long after the book was published 
And um, I actually fell in love with the book, and um, I, I was never much a book reader back then, but this was one of the very first like, sort of books that I probably ever read. And um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now, the front cover here, this was actually um, drawn by artist Duncan Gutteridge. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm going to show you something inside the book in just a moment. Now, although he didn't draw this artwork specifically for this book, in fact, um, he drew... Um, Basically, it was either the 1993 or 1994 um, Sonic the Hedgehog calendar, official calendar that was released um, by Sega. Now, he drew 12 official pieces of Sonic the Hedgehog artwork for that calendar. And basically, Sega reused um, his artwork over and over again for various other Sonic products that were released during that time, this being one of them. However, I just want to point out there that he never actually got paid again for them reusing his artwork, such as this. But um, if I open this up, there's the page here. And uh, this is why I bring up Duncan Gutteridge. Um, I met him at, oh, well, I've met him a couple of times, but um, probably about two years ago at um, a various, I think it was uh, one of the Comic Con conventions in the United Kingdom. I got the chance, to, well, I saw that he was a guest line up there, so I really wanted to bring this book and get him to sign it, which he has done here. So that's really awesome. It really uh, gives even that much more um, nostalgia to this book for me. And on the left hand side here it does say first published 1993 so I'm not going to go through every single page in this book otherwise this could go in for like a one or two hour long video but I'm going to go through like the standout parts um, in this book so the contents here I will go through just so you know exactly what you've got in here you've got introduction in the beginning Sonic the Hedgehog are you a Sonic nut which is kind of like a quiz, which I will show you that because it's very comical. Uh, you've got a Dr. Ivo Robotnik segment. You, it goes into very much detail of his egomatic, his badniks, and then you've got the tips. Sonic celebrities, towels, breaking the, the Sonic barrier, the Zone Zone, and Sayonara Sonic. So the introduction is, it's pretty much depicted that this is wrote by Sonic the Hedgehog, and it... Uh, it very much, the way he's wrote this, is very much kind of like the characteristics of the Fleetway Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, if you know kind of like the, the attitude that the Sonic the Hedgehog has in that comic series, it's very much uh, is very much like him. So he's got, hey, don't believe we've met. You were probably moving too slowly. You know my name, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog, and I thought I'd set the record straight on a few things before we go any further. So hang around for a millisec. Well, the folks at Sega asked me what I thought about doing a book. I said, you expect me to hang up my red sneakers and take up riding? No way. They said, but what about all these people out there who want to know where you come from? What do you want your... What do you do when you're not out collecting rings or running around Robotnik? They want to know the thoughts of Chairman Sonic and, in, and the inside line of your Sonic powers. So I told them, okay, I'll do it. But you get it written. I'll just introduce it. So here goes. And then it goes into the full details Sonic carries on writing a little bit and then it goes into the full history and it, I thought this bit was quite comical Sonic's right in here he goes well it happened like this and, and he's obviously talking so quick that every word is uh, all, all is one and um, he goes was that too quick sorry playing Sonic the Hedgehog does that to you Hang on while we take a deep breath and hit the restart button. So although it is a very much text uh, influenced book, it does have various pictures. Some of them are in color as well. So this goes into like very much details of how Sonic got his powers because in this uh, origin story, Sonic never actually started as a blue hedgehog. He actually started out as a brown hedgehog, very much like the, the look of um, a hedgehog you would see in real life now. And then it goes into Dr. Robotnik because he never used to be obviously a bad guy. He used to be a Dr. Kintobor, a friendly scientist and um, one of Sonic's very first best friends. So as you can see there's a lot of text. I would be here a long time if I was reading this to you. But I'm going to go into like, the standout moments. But you can see just how many pages and text this goes into how detailed um, Sonic's actual origin is. It's not just a simple case of oh he became blue via an accident. There's a lot of uh, information regarding it. A couple of months passed with Sonic's appearance showing no sign of rever reverting back to its former drabness, nor did 
He speed the crease as he surged all over the place, covering large distances in hope of locating the grey emerald for the dock. So he was friends with Dr. Kinterbor for quite some time. Even the Fleetway Sonic the comic doesn't show that. It kind of only does it in one panel, um, his friendship with Kinterbor, but it never shows you how long he actually was friends with him. And then it describes here the machine, the rock, which was created by um, Dr. Kinterbor, which was designed to um, control the Chaos Emeralds, which were uh, very much unstable, at least wrote in the, the origin of this time. And the rock was meant to, uh, I believe it was, uh, remove all the evil of the Emeralds uh, into his machine. But uh, Kinterbor, there was an accident, and at that time Kinterbor was holding a rotten egg, and he ended up falling into the machine, which therefore turned him into... Dr. Ivo Robotnik and then this goes on to sort of uh, Robotnik's uh, sort of takeover and what he did afterwards now I really like these bits because um, this goes into details of like Sonic's characteristics, what he likes to eat and what he likes to do and um, something like this would never ever get away with being published in today's age because it would be deemed as um, like a, you can't say that you can't say this, it may like offend someone or um, it would be deemed as a promoting unhealthiness in children. But it says here, Sonic's diet is cholesterol to fuel his tremendous speed. He loves burgers, tacos, nachos, fries, anything chocolate and cola by the gallon. It doesn't sound particularly healthy, but Sonic is constantly on the move and burns, burns up calories at an amazing rate. Diet drinks and the high brain, low fiber foods are not his style. So he's basically saying he doesn't do diet food. He wants the highest cholesterol fat foods that he can possibly eat. And that to me is just awesome. You would never get anything like this printed in any sort of, uh, not just Sonic related media, but like a kid's sort of uh, depiction of a character because he would never get away with it. Now, uh, this is a really comical quiz that they've put in this book. It's called, Are You a Sonic Quiz? Now I'm gonna go over it a little bit quickly goes to be this good takes ages so as they say just how committed are you complete the following quiz and find out so you get a question here and you get an a b and c answer and basically you tally up the, the more answers you've got at the end depending on the letter you've chosen so if you've got more c's you'll check the c response at the end of the book and then see what it describes you as a sonic fan so i'm going to read a few of these out to you because your best friend is playing sonic 2 on your mega drive when you notice he is about to top your coveted high score, do you sneak quietly downstairs and throw the power switch, claim you have just been cut off for not paying the bill, or do you B, applaud loudly, applaud loudly, sorry, clap him on the back for being a stout fellow and give him your signed Guns N' Roses 12 inches of reward, or do you C, throw him out and refuse to speak to him ever again? So, um, you let me know what you guys would do with that one. It carries on. You overhear a group of people making neg negative remarks about Sonic 2, do you? A. Agree with them, sell your system the very next, the next day, and take up collecting matchboxes. Do you B. Point out politely that they are leading sad, empty lives and show them why with a display of technical games wiz wizardry. Or do you C. Drop your kecks on the spot and prefer them both cheeks <laughs> it's uh the, it goes on and then we got a um a page two here uh what was the question there for that previous one actually here we go so this one's kind of like a romance one if you're in a romantic relationship you are having a quiet night and a game of Sonic when your girlfriend or boyfriend, depending on uh, which gender you are, rings up to announce she is coming round to watch and wants to watch Ghost or Terminator 2 for the seventh time. Do you cut the cut, cut the video cable, put the machine in a cupboard and claim you have been burgled when he or she arrives? Or do you be accuse her of going out with the Chippendales? Uh, him or going out with the Dagnum Girl Pipers, which were like popular like celebrities during this this period of time, which were very much like icons to other like, boys or girls. Uh, accuse them of going out with them and finish with him or her forthwith. Or do you see all the pizzas, settle back and wait for the patetry scene special effects? There you go. Um, 
I'm just going to read this last one out because this one always amuses me. Number five, he goes, Your mum accidentally pulls the plug out of your Mega Drive as you are about to rack up a truly momentous score. Do you shed a small tear, but console yourself that you'll clock up another biggie next go? Do you B, tell her she's a dozy old trout and go upstairs to pack your bags? Or do you C, fiddle the high score, fiddle the high score table and add a bit extra for your troubles? So, um, yeah. And um, these are the answer well, responses you get at the end so basically if you answered A to any question you get three points if you answered B uh, if you answered B have a good couple so you get two and C gets you uh, only one point so if you get between 12 and 15 points you are sonic bonkers an unsavable games nut but do you have any social life if you get between 8 and 11 you are a loyal Sonic fan and will receive your due reward when they dish out your high scores in heaven. Uh, five to seven, did you buy this book at a car boot sale or something? Which is quite ironic really because I actually did buy this uh, book at a car boot sale. Okay, so then now it goes into Dr. Robotnik's um, life. And I always really found this interesting because it actually goes into his early years as it's depicted here. Now, there are some scans of this book you can get uh, online. I'm sure a Google search would uh, bring this up if you did want to read this more in detail. goes into his physical characteristics, um, his diet, so if you want to know what Dr. Robotnik eats. Of course, it's uh, Robotnik has always adored and still adores eggs, hard-boiled, scrambled, over-easy, poached, or in an omelette. Now, he especially enjoys them raw with a dash of Tabascos. He eats with his hands, chewing with his mouth open so that he frequently loses bits, leaving a yellow egg stains on his white lab coat. Um, his personal hygiene leaves a great deal to be desired. He doesn't wash and never claims he's never cleans his teeth so hideously they are stained. His breath smells of egg. And there's a picture of his favourite food there. Okay, so it goes into details of his egg mag, and it even has a graph here of what his egg mag looks like while he's um, controlling it. So it tells you his gear sticks here, the fuel um, reader, mallet, spears, where his weapons are. He's even got a, a, an egg freshener in there, which must make his m machine smell like eggs. Now we go into the details of the badniks, telling you what they are, what they can do what type of badding they are, whether they're a water or on land, and their names. And as you can see there's a lot of badniks here, it focuses on all of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2's um, badniks. So now we come to the tips, now basically the tips of this book is it, it gives you detailed um, guides on how to beat the bosses for either Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive or the Master System version. And you can see it covering boss 1, boss 2, 3, I don't really need to show you too much of these in details because chances are if, you've, if you're reading or watching this video you have played these games and know these bosses. Perhaps more so um, a few of you have probably never played the Master System version of Sonic 2 and I'd really recommend it. It's um, drastically different compared to the Mega Drive version and it's also a lot more difficult especially if you're going for um, the Chaos Emeralds because if you don't get all the Chaos Emeralds you don't actually see the final boss. Some of these bosses were really challenging and um, there was actually no rings on any of the boss levels on this stage so it was one hit kills for uh, Sonic. And then we go to some celebrities who are interviewed uh, in this book, um, like wh whatever their involvement or what was their first experience with Sonic the Hedgehog. Now I don't know if any of you are going to know these people, um, they were very obviously much more known back in the 90s era. So we've got Kathy Dennis and you can see the questions are what and, what and where was your first ever experience of Sonic and she's put jumping in the box which goes under the water in the swimming aura, weird. We've got Richie James, uh, Zach, Zach Zoe, yeah, but see, I, I, even I don't even know some of these people. Uh, Richard Fairbrass, which was right said Fred, and Tom Hingley, who hasn't even got a picture of him. <laughs> and then it goes into like towels, so it has got a very like detailed description of towels and you know who he is, what he is. They did uh, uh, incorporate his origin story also in uh, Fleetway Sonic the comic. 
Now, what is Taos' diet? Because unlike most foxes, Taos' diet doesn't consist of several plum plundered chickens a day. It upsets Sonic, who pointed out that he might end up picking chirps from his teeth one day. Instead, he shares a diet similar to Sonic, though he still can't resist the odd fried chicken bucket. So there you go. Taos has a very much uh, distinctive taste for chicken. You got breaking the sound barrier. This is an exclusive interview with Vols magazine. Ask Aseg, you I can't even pronounce that. I don't think I don't think I've even heard of this uh, magazine, even from this era. But it's got an interview here. It goes into the zones now of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and detailed responses, the ringleader, and then it just goes into more story and stuff and. Um, it explains what Robotnik's involvement is in the chemical plant zone and why he has it and what he uses the resources for. So it's, it's really awesome. It gives you such a detailed uh, uh, description of everything relating to the Sonic universe, at least from Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. I mean, if you've ever wanted to know about uh, the Mystic Cave Zone, here you go. I mean, it says here, no one has ever been able to explain the origins of the ivy-covered Mystic, Mystic Cave Zone, which is lit only by flickering inhabitants, uh, insect inhabitants. And it goes on and on. Uh, the Oil Ocean Zone. Um, we are coming right close to the end of the book. Metropolis Zone. You've got a really awesome picture of Robotnik there, uh, unleashing the oil. And then we come to the end of the book, where we have uh, a send-off by Sonic the Hedgehog, the most uh, you know, titled Sign or a Sonic. Way to go, Blue Boy. That's the story so far. Sonic may have defeated Robotnik in Sonic 2, but with a nasty feeling the psychopathic prof will soon be back. Whatever. Sonic will be ready, no matter what the dotty doc dreams up. In the meantime, old Blue Spike can just chill out. Much na much nachos and fries, speed around Mobius, and generally be one hip dude hedgehog. But what about the future? Who cares, say Sonic? When you're as fast as I am, you're practically there already. And once you've got that, it's time to move on. Sayonara, Sonic. And then it advertises some of the other uh, coming soon Sonic uh, the Hedgehog game books at this time. Metal Seal Mayhem and... Um, Zone Rages. I have got Metal City, or Metal City Mayhem uh, somewhere in my collection, but I don't. I think I've got the Zone Raiders as too. I'm not that sure. And that brings us to a close. So, really awesome book. I mean, if you want to know more details, not just necessarily Sonic the Hedgehog or Doctor Robotnik, if you want to read about zones that were depicted around this era in the Sonic the Hedgehog lore. It's definitely worth checking out. As I said, it's, it's not necessarily a really rare book to come by. Um, I think quite a lot of these were printed back in the 1993 era, so you can probably find these. Um, I haven't looked recently, but I'm sure they probably pop up from time to time on eBay. Um, but if not, go check out some of the uh, scans that are uh, online. I'm sure someone has scanned this book by now um, on some Sonic website. But um, yeah, I really enjoy this book. I've got a lot of nostalgia memories of reading through this. Um, uh, it, the, the origin story may not be for everyone. You may not. What you may want to just completely ignore it completely and only focus on what the uh, canon storyline is from the Sonic games. And that's fair enough. Everyone's entitled to uh, whatever opinion they've got or what they choose to like with the Sonic, the the, the Hedgehog universe. But um, yeah, this brings this video to a close. It's gone on for just over 20 minutes, which is a lot longer than I thought it was going to go on for. But that's what happens when you review, it, review a book. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, guys, especially if you watched it all the way to the end. I really do appreciate that. Stay tuned for some more Sonic the Hedgehog collectible review videos. And see you guys soon.